Hi, this video presentation is about deep water well development, testing, and production. This video is a sequel to my previous video on deep water well rotary drilling. This will consist of well development, testing, and production. The purpose of well development is to remove fine grain material, drilled cuttings, and bentonite mud at the vicinity of the well screens also to remove sands packing around the casing. This is also called well cleanup. Well development restores groundwater properties which were disturbed or altered during the drilling process. It also restores groundwater geochemistry and improves the hydraulic connection between the formation and the well. Well testing is to measure the flow discharge of the well using a discharge pipe with a piezometer tube and orifice plate. Well production is the well's ability to produce water using submersible pump and motor. Well surging and swabbing. It is a well cleanup process to wash out bentonite mud cake sticking at the casing walls. Well surging and swabbing is only done on blank casings with no mud circulation. There is no water or air injection either. A 10 inch charging tool with circular rubber is attached to the 4-inch drill rod and hang over the rig chains. When the charging tool is lowered, a pressure surge is created to wash out the bentonite and drilled cuttings out of the well. When the tool is pulled up, a sucking action or swabbing effect is created to suck out bentonite and drilled cuttings out of the well. This process will not only clean the well, but allows gravel to be compacted. These are pictures of a 10 inch diameter charging tool with circular rubbers. The tool is attached at the end of the drill rod. Water jetting is another method of well cleanup to remove bentonite mud cake and debris inside the well, but this is only applied at the well screens. This process will make sure screens are cleared from any obstructions. Pressurized water is pumped using the rig pump and it sits at the end of the drill rod through the eight concentric holes. The jets of water coming out from the holes clean the inside of the casings. The pressurized water with mud and cuttings are carried up and out of the well then discharges at the mud pit. This is a picture of the jetting tool attached at the end of the drill rod. It has eight concentric holes where jets of water comes out. Acidizing. Acidizing breaks up hardened bentonite from bottom to top of the well. It is another method of well cleanup. The chemicals we used were a mixture of three sacks, 25 kilograms per sack, of sodium hexametaphosphate or polyphosphate, which is mixed with one drum, 200 liter water. This formulation is for a 150 meter depth well. The mixture is manually poured into the well and let it soak for 12 hours. Compressed air jetting. Compressed air jetting is another method of well development, which is done by injecting high pressure and high volume air to remove bentonite at the well bottom. High pressure air is provided by the air compressor. Compressed air from the compressor passes inside the string and exits the drill string at high pressure and volume. The compressed air carries the bentonite and drilled cuttings out of the well and into the mud pit. If there is a water source or aquifer, the compressor discharge pressure will increase during jetting. In this case, the air compressor is alternately turned on and off to give time for the water to accumulate inside the well, then air jet the well again. During the process, Pebbles and gravel will eventually compact to fill the void spaces in the gravel pack. It is recommended to monitor the level of the gravel at the annulus and add if necessary. 
This is a picture of a compressed air jetting setup. This is the air supply from the compressor. This is the high pressure air hose connected to the well. And this is the 4 inch discharge pipe. Well test. Well testing is to measure the flow discharge of the well using a discharge test pipe with piezometer tube and orifice plate. A submersible pump and motor is installed at the end of the riser pipe. The riser and seamless column pipe is 4 inch by 10 feet schedule 40 black iron. You can also use 6 to 10 inch diameter carbon steel. When the pump is turned on, water is discharged through a 4-inch test pipe, which I will discuss in more detail on the next slide. The water is then discharged at the mag pit. A water level sounding pipe is installed to determine the static water level or SWL. This is the water level when the pump is turned off, which is found to be 25 meters. When the pump is turned on, the water level decreases to a level called production water level or PWL, which is 30 meters. The difference between PWL and SWL is called drawdown. These are the details of the 4-inch test pipe during well testing. Water flows inside the pipe and controlled by a control valve. A piezometer tube is installed inside the pipe, approximately at the pipe center. A measuring stick measures the height of the water at the piezometer tube. Then a 3 inch diameter orifice plate is installed at the end of the pipe to restrict the flow so as to attain a water height at the piezometer. The distance of the piezometer tube to the control valve is 4 feet, while the orifice plate is 2 feet from the piezometer tube. So the ratio is 2 thirds is to 1 third. When the water starts coming out of the test pipe discharge, you measure the height of the water going inside the piezometer tube, say 25 inches. Then determine the flow rate Q using the orifice table found on next slide. And then you have to obtain water samples and observe for sands. So this is the orifice table which determines the flow discharge Q with a given orifice plate diameter and height of water at piezometer. From previous slides, the water height at the piezometer was 25 inches. From the orifice table above, at 4 inch pipe diameter and 3 inch orifice plate there you go the discharge flow Q is 13.25 liters per second or 0 0.47 cubic feet per second so this is the well test setup that's the 4 inch test pipe the control valve which controls the flow of water, the piezometer tube, the measuring tape, and the 3 inch orifice plate.
Grouting. Grouting is to seal off the gravel packing and stabilizing the 12 inch casing at the surface. The 20 inch temporary casing is removed. A 2 inch gravel fill pipe is installed. A 2 inch water level sounding pipe is then put in place. Then a half meter clay seal is applied. A concrete cement is poured a cement grout above the clay seal that runs up to the surface. Then cut 12 inch casing with a one meter stick up. A steel cover is welded on top of the 12 inch casing. Lastly, a discharge pipe and a control valve is installed. The last item is well production. Well production is the well's ability to produce water using a submersible pump and motor. This uses the standard production riser pipe and the standard pipes used in actual production. The submersible pump and motor is installed below the production riser pipe. See the diagram. The production water level is found to be at 30 meters below surface. A standard 6 inch diameter ASTM GI pipe by 20 foot schedule 40 is installed together with a control valve. In the actual insulation, this well is required to deliver water into a water tank or reservoir with a tank inlet located 20 meters above ground. Now we need to find out how many horsepower does the pump require in order to deliver water into the tank. First we compute for the total pump head. The total pump head is the measure of the pump's ability to push fluids through the system against gravity. Head is a height. The formula is PWL or production water level plus vertical height of the water at tank inlet plus the pipe friction losses. The pipe friction losses are the amount of energy your piping system is losing because of the fluids in motion are meeting resistance against the pipe's internal surface, pipe bends, elbows, valves, and fittings. We substitute the values. PWL is 30 meters. Vertical height is 20 meters plus pipe friction losses is assumed to be 5 meters. So the total pump head is equal to 55 meters or 180.4 feet. Now let's compute for the pump power P. Pump power is the energy transmitted or imparted to the fluid by the pump to increase the fluid's pressure and speed around the system. The formula is rho QH where rho is the density of water, Q is the flow rate, H is the total pump head. So P is equal to rho QH. We substitute the values. Rho is 62.4 pounds per foot cube, which is the density of water, multiplied by 0 0.47 cubic feet per second, which we computed and determined on the previous slides and multiplied by H, the total pump head of 180.4 feet. Multiply all the items, we come down to 5,290.77 foot pound per second. We multiply this by the conversion factor for one horsepower, which is equal to 542.48 foot pound per second we get 9.75 horsepower or say 10 horsepower so we found out that it requires 10 horsepower for the pump to push the water into the tank
If you think this is helpful information, please subscribe to Engineers Got Talent.